In this demonstration, we will show you how to tackle energy efficiency in your enterprise. Going green is more than a buzzword. We care because it influences so much of what is important today. First, money. Both operational costs and capital costs are at stake. In 2007, data centers consumed 183 billion kilowatt hours of energy for a total cost of $15.9 billion. Industry studies commonly demonstrate that most enterprises could save 40 percent or more in operational costs associated with energy. New data centers aren't cheap. Larger ones can be 100 million dollars or more with over 20 billion dollars a year spent on new data centers. Assessments performed by IBM's Global Services show average payback in less than two years with many projects providing an even quicker payback. Second, risk. Energy is a component of maintaining your service levels. Interruptions to energy infrastructure threaten your business services. Today, the power distribution infrastructure is completely uncorrelated with the IT service management infrastructure in the majority of enterprises we work with. Third, compliance. We have an obligation to reduce the money we spend and the risk that energy poses to our business. We now have to be able to prove how much energy and carbon dioxide our organizations are driving. Around the world, countries are implementing systems to reward those that are able to reduce carbon emissions and punish those that do not. This increased focus on compliance presents an opportunity for firms that are able to actively manage their carbon footprint while posing a real threat to those that cannot meet these new regulations. And last, responsibility. As the world moves to pursue energy efficiency, your ability to do so will drive competitive differentiation, recruitment, and corporate social responsibility to stakeholders. Our internal surveys show that three-quarters of you have a corporate-wide initiative to reduce energy consumption, with 90% of those including the data center. What you're also telling us is that you don't know how your organization is using energy. The data you do have is scattered, power bills, spreadsheets, reports, and none of it ties back to the services you deliver. In short, your power distribution infrastructure is uncorrelated with the IT service management infrastructure in a majority of enterprises. Over the next few minutes, we will show you how Tivoli can help you get there, and it's not hard. It all starts with gaining visibility to the data required to take action. Many of you are using tools today to monitor nearly every IT metric that you can imagine for performance and availability. Here we are showing CPU, disk, network, and memory. Today, this information alone helps us drive optimization, virtualization, and consolidation across our IT equipment. If you recall, in mid-2008, we extended these monitoring capabilities so that we now include energy along with the IT metrics we've been monitoring for ages. On the screen now is an actual set of systems using these capabilities in our Bubblegum Germany data center. The servers in this data center emit power and thermal information we can collect. Here you can see real-time power consumption and temperature data along with CPU and memory data for the IT equipment. This allows us to correlate server energy with other relevant metrics about the server, quickly identifying mismatches between energy consumption and performance. Most of the data on energy is available to you today. Most of us just haven't been taking advantage of it. By turning these available metrics into collected data, today's Tivoli architecture is set to take advantage of it. To start, we can do historical analysis that includes power, thermal, and performance data. Here we can see the average power consumption and temperature data over the last 12 hours, along with system utilization data. We can see that our server CPU utilization never rises above 15%, as shown on the single blue line in the bottom left of the screen. And yet, on the top in yellow, we continue to burn consistent power to keep that server active. This might be a good candidate for virtualization and consolidation. What is unique is that this type of correlation of the power facility infrastructure is now readily available with the IT service management infrastructure for every server you have. Let's look further at what is available today. IT equipment only makes up about half of the power consumption in the data center. The rest of the power is consumed by data center infrastructure and facilities equipment. So how can you manage energy for these non-IT assets? 
We've tackled the data center infrastructure portion by working with partners such as APC, Eaton, and Emerson Liebert to gather, analyze, and act on data for the devices they manage such as UPSs and PDUs. So in this part of the demo, you can see that we're looking at the power consumption of the IT equipment along with the power consumption and battery life of the UPS and PDU. These metrics allow us to assess and be ready for any interruptions to our power distribution infrastructure. The next major component of the power distribution infrastructure is the facility itself. Air conditioning, water chillers, coolers, airflow components, humidifiers, and cracks. Again, we reached out to collaborate with industry leaders like Johnson Controls, Siemens, and TAC to gather, analyze, and act on data for the facility's infrastructure devices they manage. In this view, we're showing key data points and alerts for these non-IT assets. We can set thresholds around any of these metrics so we can instantly react to any equipment failures, overloads, and other problems. For example, if a cooling unit fails, we can see how much cooling capacity remains before we have to start moving workload and shutting things down. IBM is the only one bringing together every piece of your energy infrastructure and correlating it with the workloads that drive the business. Let's now put this data to use and look at one of our standard reports. When we combine the IT data center infrastructure and facilities energy information, we can essentially create a single pane of glass for energy in the data center for the first time. The industry is developing standards for relating this data to efficiency. A current industry standard metric is called DCIE, Data Center Infrastructure Efficiency, and is now available to you as you can see on the graph. Now the best theoretical DCIE possible would be 100%, meaning that all of our power is being used to power our IT workloads and none was needed for battery backup, cooling, lighting, power distribution, etc. In the real world, this number is typically closer to 50%, meaning that half goes to IT and the other half goes to supporting facilities and data center equipment. Here you can see that we're running at about 53%. Having a benchmark like this helps us to compare the efficiency of multiple data centers and to see the impact of actions you take to improve efficiency. IBM is unique in the industry in delivery of these reports. And last, financial accountability is now possible across the enterprise armed with the energy data and reports. Our Tivoli usage and accounting software was also updated this past year to allow us to bill for energy costs associated with each of our business services. This can drive accountability for energy throughout the organization. It is no longer a free commodity. Energy-related usage and accounting information is an enabler for proving carbon reduction over time and helping qualify for utility rebates. We are now going to transition to the second step of our demo. We will show you real-life scenarios our clients are doing today. In these scenarios, we will analyze and optimize assets for energy efficiency. Let's move to the next stage. The report on the right shows the current state of power consumption in our data center. This is where most people are focused. The key question to ask is, do you know how much you'll be using six months from now? On the left, the integrated analysis tools that are a part of our monitoring toolset are able to predict the total power consumption of our data center for the next year based on the analysis of the historical data. In this case, we are looking at the power consumption trend for one of our key applications, and we can see that we are predicting growth in power beyond tolerable limits. In most major urban centers, it's impossible to bring more power in on demand. Energy now becomes a part of what has to be managed in maintaining the health of your business services. You can't turn equipment off to use less power without understanding the impact on the service it supports for the business. This next part of the demo shows us a view of the application in our data center. The top of the screen shows volume of transactions. You can see that in green. The middle shows response time of the transactions, and you can see that in yellow. The bottom shows the power usage of the servers that support this one application. We can also see that the response time of the data is well within our service level agreements in the middle. One capability now at your disposal is to turn down the amount of power needed to support the application while maintaining the overall service level. We'll set a power cap on two of these servers so that we can see the impact of reducing server power on energy consumption as well as our business service. 
Without leaving this screen, we can choose servers that support this application and dynamically reduce their energy consumption. We are using the IBM Systems Director Active Energy Manager to cap the power on two of the application's five servers. This will take a minute to take effect. While we wait, I'm going to take you through an actual example from IBM's own Austin, Texas production data center. The Austin team installed all of the tools we've talked about so far in their data center. After energy management tools were installed, the IBM team was paged at 1 a.m. every night due to a spike in power for the whole data center. This spike seemed unusual, so the team pulled up this historical chart, the one at the top in red, and saw that the same thing was happening every night, and that both energy and IT utilization were spiking. The team then pulled up the process chart for the servers, and were able to determine that the cause of these CPU and energy spikes, to their surprise, was a routine antivirus scan. It was driving 2% of incremental energy when it ran, which was a big deal given that our Austin data center was already running so close to full capacity. By staggering the virus scans, the team was able to reduce the peak loads on the servers and prevent costly power and cooling spikes. This is an example of how visibility into energy can help identify simple actions that can reduce energy usage. Now let's go back to our application view and see the impact of the power capping policy that we've put into place. We can immediately see in the bottom right that we have reduced the power usage of these servers by about 70 watts each. The response time of our application is still well within the bounds of our existing SLA, as you can see in the middle graph, so we have saved energy, at no cost to the business, and if demand picks up, we can adjust the power back up. This can be done manually or automatically. How much money did we save? Let's take a metropolitan area with a price of 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Dropping two servers by 70 watts for 14 hours saves us exactly 2 kilowatt hours, assuming a transactional workday of 10 hours long. If we just did this every day, we would save in power about $700 a year on these two servers. If we have a thousand servers, just in server power alone you would save $350,000. If you extended this to include weekends and holidays, you would add an additional $175,000 a year. This totals to over a half a million for just one simple policy change. This doesn't take into account the drop in temperature, cooling, and other secondary benefits that would drive the savings even further, nor does it consider carbon credit or utility rebates which can drive additional savings. We've just shown you two examples of how using the properties of the Tivoli architecture can drive enhanced control across your energy infrastructure. No one else in the industry is able to deliver visibility, control, and automation for energy in the context of the applications it supports. And last, we are going to focus on the impact of energy to the business. Our awareness of energy can help us to improve the availability of our services. The strength of the Tivoli architecture enables you to use energy as a key service metric for driving process automation. The view that you're seeing now is a tree representation of a business service that we model in our demo environment and all of the components that make up the service. Right now we can see that we have an energy alert that has been sent to the operations team for action. The symptoms of the alert indicate a high power state. We are exceeding our threshold for power consumption, which means that our service is at risk. Even though it hasn't taken down the service yet, we are getting indications that it might in the future. As you can see in the bottom right, we have a second server that has excess capacity, is using less power, and running cooler. This energy incident has automatically been sent to the Tivoli Service Request Manager. Next, let's see what energy looks like in SRM. Here we can see energy situations are now included with other service requests that are active. In the top left, you can see that energy is now a part of our incident classification and can be managed seamlessly with other types of incidents. Because the engineers have already been notified that there is an issue, they have opted to directly take action and move the workload to a safe set of servers while the actual issue is resolved. This is the benefit that integration of the IT infrastructure and the power distribution infrastructure now enables. In the past, we might have waited for the facilities engineers to fix the physical problems that were causing energy spikes, all the while putting one of our key business services in jeopardy. There may still be an issue with regards to power capacity in the racks that needs to be addressed by facilities, but now it is no longer threatening our ability to deliver this service. 
we have a record of the changes that we have made so that we can choose to undo this action to return everything to normal at some point in the future. This is just one example of how getting control over energy can lead to greater automation and lower risk. Now let's step back and look at a macro view. From this dashboard, executives can now manage their energy efficiency as a key performance indicator for the business. This focus on energy efficiency not only helps drive down costs, but also helps to address the growing issue of governmental regulation of carbon emissions. So, going back to where we started, a CIO can now confidently tell the CEO that their organization has energy under control and is contributing to the corporate initiatives. CIOs are now well positioned to be a part of the solution to their CEO's green goals rather than a big part of the problem. All of this functionality is available today. To learn more, please contact your IBM sales representative or IBM business partner and visit our green website at www.ibm.com/software/green.